what you're referencing there. And uh, we'll get him on in here. So uh, calling him on up. Hopefully we don't have technical issues between me and him like we did with myself and Vic. But uh, yeah, we do have snaking here. How's it going, man? Good. How are you, sir? Doing all right. Doing all right. Uh, had a pretty awesome match there. And uh, it looks like you guys performed very, very well as well. So how does it feel after that win? Um, it certainly feels good. And it's... Uh, we're pretty close to being eliminated from this league, but we're gonna have to pick up the slack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, cutting it close, but with this win, I mean, you're still in, it's still in the running there. You're still in a, a pretty good spot to have a shot at the playoffs there. And even if not, then you've you've proven that you guys have uh, a lot of uh, potential to just go with this new <laughs> roster lineup. How's it feel being back on the team? It certainly feels great that um, to be able to play with my team once again. And previously, I was my schedule limited me. Now I have more free time as mm -hmm. the year is almost over. Sure. Yeah, um, yeah. So, um, do you think that you're still going to be able to attend probably like major vast majority of Dignitas's games? You're not going to have to get like st like I know right now Fly is having some issues uh, uh, specifically with his country, and so therefore. Uh, He's going to be having a stand-in like a ton of the time. Is that something that we're going to have to see from Dignitas uh, in the next couple months until you're done with school, or are you going to be pretty consistent? I, I think I'll be pretty consistent. Um, thanks to our manager, uh, Charlie Yang, scheduling our team. Shout-out to him. And he's, he's doing a really good job on scheduling all the games around of our times. And I, think I, don't, I don't think I'll be missing a match. Cool. Well, that's awesome to hear because, I mean, your lineup is working out amazingly. Now, you were previously running a lot on the offlane, and now you've kind of transitioned to uh, mid. Fogged has taken up the role on support. I already heard from him last week a little bit of his thoughts on the transition, but how about yourself? How do you feel taking up that mid role? Um, it certainly, have, ha I haven't been playing mid for a while, but uh, I certainly feel confident, and I think I'll be able to compete mid all. As I, I previously played mid for a l many teams before, and... It has been very successful ever before, and I think it'll work fine just as we're seeing right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, really cool stuff. That that first match especially kind of hinged on your kind of initiation. I was commenting throughout all the drafts that once that puck came out, it, it really put a lot on your shoulders because if you could get those big silences off, suddenly half their team is useless. So when that Blink Dagger came out and you started really, really making the initiation happen, how, like there's got to be some uh, uh, blood rush in there, a little bit of enjoyment out of that. Yeah, they definitely picked um, a, a, a lineup that gets countered very hard by Puck Silence and Coil, and I, they they didn't actually ban it during the second banning stage. We were very surprised. We didn't think we were going to get Puck at all, and then once we saw the, it got through the banning stage, we, we knew we can just simply last pick and surprise them because they weren't going to pick Puck because they first threed uh, uh, Quap, Furion, and uh, Lena. We knew their solo lanes were going to be Furion and Quap most likely, and they weren't going to pick up puck for offlane or, or something like that mm -hmm. yeah so uh, about those drafts do you, do you feel that you guys kind of came out of the upper hand i mean you just mentioned that the puck didn't get banned out and you were surprised about that uh in both games as a whole do you feel that uh, your drafts were a little bit better off i th yeah i definitely feel that we we knew what exactly they were doing from the very beginning of the picks that's why we picked a sort of weird defensive tri lane uh dual lane so to speak not exactly tri lane because bad is young lane and we definitely knew what we had to do to win the game is simply not um, sack top and don't just that if they'd ever do, uh, get dove we just simply TP in and support them and we would simply turn a fight around and once bounty hunter hit, hit six his golden age we simply just go around the map and start killing them and picking them apart mm -hmm. so um, that match specifically you were looking at uh, going up against Virtus Pro with one stand in and one relatively new player going up against the Navi boys Dendi and Arzart uh, how's it feel to take them down, and uh, did you have any d different uh, mindsets going up against those two in this match here? Did you have to play differently? No, nothing really went through our head. We saw Dendi ring, but we were, we were considering if he was going middle or not, and that's the only thing we were really considering. But once we saw Tame My Wild pick uh, the Queen of Pain and, and, um, on the first game, and then the, and then Dendi picked the Fear on, we knew that D Dendi was playing off lane, and nothing, I didn't, we didn't feel anything was going to change. And we just simply played our game. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the m matchup they had in the second game, you were it was Batrider versus Pugna. How does that matchup play out in your mind? And do you think that Pugna could be something that could be picked up more frequently? I think Pugna is definitely a legitimate pick, and actually, Pugna has been picked up a lot more often than a VP actually does on on tournaments. They actually do a lot in scrims, and I've played it multiple times in scrims. It's a, it's a very strong mid solo actually because. 
it has a four int gain, and it's just insane how much mana sh and amount of nukes Pugna can put out, and it certainly can fare well against any mid solo. And I would say it's one of the strongest mid right now, and it has great p pushing power. But the only limitation is the squishiness and its lack of mobility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have a high strength gain and stuff, so he's very reliant on getting those spells cast off uh, very, very carefully. Um, speaking of very, very uh, survivable heroes, but not much HP to work with, uh, one thing I, I just kind of want to uh, jump back to in game one, there was a team fight up top where you, like, phase shift three different things, you jaunted a couple different things, you were living with an injury life. He did end up dying to Alina right click at the very end of it, but what was going through your head right there? It was definitely um, a lot of adrenaline was ru rushing through my head, and I was surprised that I lasted so long, to be honest with you. I, I thought I'd die a lot earlier, but it turned out well, and then the Lena came in and definitely ruined my dream of oh, living. Yeah. yeah, that would have been like super woe Dota big plays there if it hadn't been for that last uh, last yeah. little fireball. But, uh, you know, you can just cut that out, no big... Uh, <laughs> Anyways, um, so was there a point where you just felt like you had uh, either one of the games under control? Like, there was a point where there were, like, four buybacks from Virtus Pro for a Roche engagement on game two, and then in game one, you just had so many great initiations. Was there a point where you are just like, this is ours 100%, there's nothing they can do? Um, I think after the, the second team fight at top tier one that we s simply wiped them, and we were gaining a lot of confidence, and we knew we can take Roshan anytime as we desire and just simply push them down. I think they already, I think they lost like 15 minutes into the game, to be honest with you. In the second game, I felt the um, the breaker was that the Roshan fight where they simp they got the Aegis snatch and lost the fight and all had to force to buy out, and I think that, that, that really gave us the lead and momentum in the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely an interesting pace changing there. Um, specifically, how is the draft working nowadays? Is it kind of a collaborative effort, or is there one individual that is focusing on the hero picks more than anybody else? <sighs> to be frank, it's always been way too sexy picking, regardless he's in he's sitting in the captain slot or not. And simply after now, he's just sitting in there and picking now. And it's it's we it's more of him picking and we listening, and we just simply suggest heroes that we like to play and think it's nice and that typically only applies to me because others don't have much much as a choice mm -hmm. but yeah you have a lot of flexibility there and that kind of what is what a little bit makes it fun uh fog was talking about how you guys just kind of try to have a fun game so that uh, even if you do lose even if you do just get completely stomped all over that you still have uh the encouragement and the emotions to move on forward and uh, try your best on the next one so that's always a great mentality to take to it and uh, i'm glad you guys are enjoying your different diverse uh, scenarios for picks as well um but in that situation we've already kind of highlighted on those were really really uh, overwhelming picks up against virtus pro do you feel that they could have drafted some significantly differently to perform better um i'm not i'm not too sure because that that definitely was the virtus pro play style where the, the nakes and the reaver uh tri lanes i perhaps it, it was just too obvious and maybe they they need to change up something because once we saw the first three picks we pretty much knew exactly how the lanes were gonna work out and we knew what we had to do to in order to counter it mm -hmm. Yeah, and in neither, in neither case did the Nature's Prophet really make that much of an impact. The mechanism was delayed for Dendi, and then for Arzart. He got a couple of cool little things, but for the most part, it just didn't seem like it was that big of a deal. Is that a hero that you're afraid of at all? Mm, I, it certainly is a great hero, and it is to be afraid of, for sure, but it depends on the situation. With, like, with like picks like Bounty Hunter, Puck, or, or like... um just stuns and silences in general, like, Fearon becomes really weak. Like, you have to have a really good positioning and it's just simply I think they just sort of fell apart after the early game losing a few heroes um and I don't think I, I think the Furion pick was more to counter us from picking it because we have to actually pick Furion in like the past three four times I would like to say versus Virtus Pro when we played and we have gotten great results from them and I think that's what they were going be behind the back of their minds picking mm -hmm. that hero mm -hmm. So you kind of are, we're talking along the lines of you kind of have them figured out. Uh, Dignitas actually has an amazing track record up against Virtus Pro. D is there anything that you feel that they, like, do they feel they have any surprises in store or tricks up their sleeve? Or do you feel that it's just so transparent for what you guys go on into that you're not too concerned? I, I'm, I'm not too sure what Virtus Pro is fully capable of as they have never shown any secret strategies so, as far as I'm, I'm concerned. And I think they can, they're a great team, and I think once they find perhaps some new strategies and make it make it less transparent for them, I think they will do a lot better in this scene. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, what is uh, probably the one team that you are most afraid to go up against? Is there something that's just a team that's too unpredictable, or is there something that just uh, obviously has a lot of great fundamentals and skilled players individually? Is there a specific uh, team or a couple teams that you are looking out for right now? Um, I think NTH is a big, big, something big to look out for, and we haven't played against them in so long, and same with any non-Russian team, and we're really in question of what they're capable of, because we haven't play with them, play against them. Mm -hmm. Alright, so that's, yeah, obviously a lot of different things. What do you think about the Eastern scene right now? Obviously it's not one that clashes very commonly, especially with North American Dota, but uh, is there uh, anything that you have as far as thoughts on, obviously right now IG is pretty much considered the uh, the top tier by far, uh, but uh, just in general, have you kept up with that? Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, um, I think the Chinese scene is just simply, it's the same teams dominating the scene. I'm not sure if any Thing is going to change uh, sooner, even at TI3. I think the top Chinese teams, and including IGD, and are simply going to be invited to TI3. I, that's my opinion. And then I think they're going to do well in this next coming year. I don't think anything's going to change. Okay. So, uh, after that, uh, obviously you feel pretty good. You were able to control the lanes, control the fights. Uh, so that pretty much, pretty much looks at look at the past. And did you feel you learned anything from that? Or a lot of people say that if you win a game, you're not going to learn very much compared to if you get just completely destroyed. So is there anything to take away for you? I think w both losing and winning, you can. There's some. There's something you can take away because no one plays a perfect game. Every <laughs> there's there's always a little mistake that you can look out for in the replays. And I I am a strong believer of of that and I actually watch every replay that, of tournament matches or scrims that I play and I try to look for those and it's important to realize that there are mistakes and keep an open mind when your teammates talk about them because mm -hmm. sometimes you may not see it and they see it and they can help you improve as well and you can do the same for them and it just it's all about improving constantly because the metagame always changes with the new heroes and new items and even new players you're playing against and you just have to adjust mm -hmm. Um, do you feel there's any changes in the me uh, the metagame and actually just changes in the game design as a whole do you think that would improve things? A lot of uh, people ask mid players in general about their thought on bottle crowing and how it kind of just makes it so that as long as you play passively enough you'll do all right just by continuously spamming out uh, the bottle back and forth to base. Is that something that you feel could uh, be altered at all or just as it is? I'm I'm not sure what Ashfrog wants to do because the bottle crawling has been a th has been something that everyone does at middle and it just you bottle crow I'll bottle crow it just it just the mid just farms and it just se seems like it's dependent on the side lanes whether they win their lane or not and of and oftentimes I I, I feel this is fine uh, the game how the game is played right now mm -hmm. it's it's a lot of it's it's lesser about just the one player winning middle and winning the whole game. It's more about your rest of the team and communication and team fights, rather. Because in the old, older ages, you used to see like Queen of Pain or TA just picked up by Ferrari or ZKK just completely dominate the whole game. And it just, I don't think it's something people like to watch. Gotcha, gotcha. So, yeah, that's kind of a. Uh, it, I agree with you. It's been in for a very, very long time. If they wanted to make a change, some people talk about like maybe make it two thirds full if it goes on by a courier. Uh, do you think that would make an impact at all? I, I think it, it wouldn't make much of a difference. That one bottle charge is not going to make or break the game mm -hmm. uh, for middle. I, I think people are still going to do it, and I will still do it myself. And it's just how it is right now. Sure. Unless they make it fill one charges or no charges. Oh gosh, that would be it, that. That would be more significant. Yeah. I'm not seeing any. I'm not. I'm not foreseeing any changes currently. Yeah, sure enough, sure enough. I mean, you've definitely liked the the mid matchups as it is because you're doing very, very well in a lot of them. So uh, great to see you guys kind of bouncing back. Like we've mentioned that you guys have a lot of ups and downs, but right now it definitely seems to be moving much more towards one of those upswings. What's What's in store for us uh, in the future as viewers of Dignity Toss? What do you guys expect to be pulling out of the bag? Um, we have some on. Um, Attempted strategies that we want to try. Perhaps if they're successful, we'll be showing them, showcasing them in the upcoming matches. And they they include some unorth really unorthodox heroes, and we'll see how that works out. Cool, cool. And uh, anything else as far as Dingy Toss's future plans? Thoughts for obviously you want to get into like playoffs and stuff like that for these tournaments here. Anything yeah. along the lines of uh, moving towards international? Yeah, uh, I think the big step stepping stone towards the international will be the G1 League. Um, personally. The G1 League is the biggest tournament besides outside of uh, TI3 currently, and the qualifiers for the NNEU or 
have some really rare times really early I think it currently we're hearing 4 a.m. EST or 10 10 a.m. CEST I'm not sure if the NA slash euro uh, community will be able to watch these games live casted gotcha. um, it's, and it's coming up next week as well so and we really want to qualify for the G1 league it's a lot of money and pride and prestige mm -hmm. on the line for everyone yeah, most definitely. That's pretty much like the end all be all for a lot of teams. So it's definitely the focus, and understandably so for that. But uh, there are um, a bunch of other playoffs coming up. Is there any team you're kind of secretly rooting for beyond yourself? Um, of course, we'll be always really rooting for our other me fellow American team, Team Liquid, and we hope EG will be able to do, to come back as well. As Malk is on vacation, they haven't been screaming for weeks now. I'm not sure what's going to happen about the team, but I hope for the best for them. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Alrighty then, well that kind of wraps it up for the questions in the chat, and as far as myself, do you have any uh, other topics you want to cover, or any shoutouts you want to give? Yeah, I just want to give a few shoutouts to our manager and Team Dignantas as well as our sponsors, um, and you can follow me on Twitter at SnakeKingDota2, and that's it for me. Thank you for having me here. It was a great pleasure. <laughs> sure, no problem. <laughs> have a good one, man. See ya. Alright, see ya.